afternoon, everyone. It's lovely to be here with you. Um, our journey in, at Woodstock Marriott Community Health Center, sorry to be behind a podium, but our journey has been very, I would say, somewhat organic as a, as a new community health center. And I'm standing up here, but at the back of the room, I know you know my colleagues, Jenny Lee Cook. Uh, Jenny Lee, if you could just raise your hand. And Liz Dymock uh, from Woodstock Marriott Community Health Center. So I guess I'm here presenting to you, but they are my partners as well as the rest of the center in this journey. Um, and it has been a journey. And I think, you know, in a little bit in con contrast to what Denise has said, ours is a new CHC. It's been in place four years. Um, for those of you in a longer standing CHC, you, you have established partnerships and relationships with other agencies. Your community understands your role as a CHC, the model of health and well-being that, from which you serve. Um, a new CHC coming to a community that doesn't know what a community health center is all about, it's a new journey again, helping a community to understand that we're more than a physician's office, that we have a holistic model of care, and that we work with a broad range of partners. And so really that's been in part when we're talking, from when I'm speaking to you about the CIW and our journey, it really started four years ago um, at our first annual general meeting, similar to Denise. Um, you know, we'd, I'd heard about the CIW through the ED network, and um, it was really clear that it resonated for our journey. I was very pleased that Gary Machen came and spoke at our first AGM, talked about the work of the Barry Community Health Centre, and their work there to develop, develop a resiliency collaborative. I, I'm assuming some of you have heard about that, where agencies work together around the table to promote greater awareness of um, social issues and health issues in Barrie, and they work together to create local, I'll say white papers, for lack of fact sheets, about some of the areas of the um, Canadian Index of Well-Being. That seemed like a really innovative idea, and so for our, at our CHC, you know, we started a process really of community development where we started to work with our partners to talk about the Canadian Index of Well-Being. There's a, a, there was a new beginning social planning council in Oxford, and we were part of the process of helping that new beginning social planning council get up and running. And I think we recognize them as a key partner in our discussion about well-being. And um, uh, another key partner was public health, clearly, um, and Canadian Mental Health Association, Children's Aid Society, I could go on. There's a, a whole group of organizations that really were quite interested in having this conversation of, Originally, they talked about quality of life, but the Canadian Index of Well-Being was a model, it was a, a reference point that really garnered support. Everyone could see the relationship of the Canadian Index of Well-Being to the very quality of life conversations that had been occurring with the, mu with the municipality. So that really began the platform of conversation that we started to have. And gradually, we found more and more of our partners through that conversation started to really find that it resonated uh, with them. Common language that we could use, possible common planning tool that we could use, a common way to talk about well-being, which we also really desperately wanted to see a movement towards a well-being frame of reference for all of Oxford County. So it was beginning, taking baby steps as we went, um, and um, early on, our CHC, and I'm, I'm broadening this a little bit, we were looking for practical ways to start applying the CIW in our own agency and to start to talk about well-being as an approach. And so we created a, a, a well-being calendar uh, that you may have seen where each month we focus on the eight, there's 12 months obviously, so we do more than just the eight, eight domains, but we have the eight domains featured each, in each month. And we focus, we divided up our programs according to the focus of the domain, you know, whether it was population health, um, community vitality. And so um, each of the programs that we offered are presented in each month. And that was a tool to start talking with the people that we serve in our community about well-being and about the model of Canadian, the model of the Canadian Index of Well-Being. So that kind of as a bit of a basis, um, I'm just going to move forward and talk a little bit about how we started. Similarly, it's interesting because I always enjoy hearing Denise speak. Um, and similarly in our community, community vitality was an area that started to resonate very early. 
Um, last year, we invited about 120 people to come and hear about what the community of Guelph had been doing and their journey around the, their wellness initiative. And those 120 to 140 people that came to that day told us that out of the eight domains, we asked them to give us feedback, and out of the eight domains, community engagement and community vitality really resonated for them. And in particular, community belonging. And so we started down a path of that seemed to resonate and create, there was energy for our partners and for community residents, the people we served. And so we moved forward in that area, looking more closely at the area of community belonging as part of community vitality. And we, we also were partnering with United Way, which I didn't mention is a key partner in this journey. They were also very excited about well-being and they were doing community focus groups, lived experience focus groups, trying to understand for people in Oxford County what were the areas of real interest and the areas of public knowledge where people felt we could perhaps start to improve, um, we could build on the strengths that we had. And uh, one of the areas, uh, through the uh, several months um, of community conversations, the United Way came forward with four key areas that people said were very important to them. And community belonging came out as one of those very key areas. So we agreed to work with United Way to host a session in uh, June, May, might have been June, where we, fought, we talked more about community belonging and how we might move from talking about it to action. Um, we invited an, a broad cross-section of people from the community again to talk about their experience of belonging because we wanted to broaden and deepen the conversation. And we invited Dr. Michael Unger to come and speak to us. He is from the Center of Resiliency at Dalhousie University. And so he came and shared with us his kind of didactic and theoretical approach to twin it with the public knowledge. So we were talking about public knowledge and expert knowledge. And he, of course, came with the challenge, as Jenny Lee did, of how could we be the change as a group of community agency representatives and community members? How could we be agents or secret agents of change, helping to bring forward um, a, new, a new approach to um, inclusion in, a, in our community? And so here's a picture of the session, some of the activities that we engaged in. And this is uh, Michelle Franklin from United Way presenting the four themes that came out of the lived experience work groups and talking specifically about belonging and what they had learned. And so really at the end of this, I'm really focusing, and I know not all of you have heard this before, but some of you may have heard a broader presentation that I gave at the AOHC conference. And I wanted to bring it forward now and, and tell you more about what we've done since that time. So for those of you that weren't at that presentation, I apologize because I'm not bringing you for, bring forward all of the information, but I wanted to really tell you what we've done. And that's, this is with Jenny Lee in particular and Trevor McLean from our health center. From that discussion that we had with Dr. Unger and all the community representatives and United Way, we tried to say, okay, where do we focus on in terms of action? Now that we have a broader agreement and understanding that community belonging is important to us, how do we move forward and how do we twin the public knowledge from the lived experience groups with the conversation that occurred at the, the coffee uh, talk. And there were kind of some, we took the seven areas of belonging that were or resiliency areas that Dr. Unger highlighted and really um, themed what people said into those seven areas. And you'll see a slide in a moment that highlights that. And we ended up deciding that an area of community action where we could move forward and everybody was on the same page was focusing on, and it sounds very high level, but we wanted it to resonate at a personal level, and this really came from Jenny Lee and Devin from the Public Health Unit. Smile at me and say hello as a beginning point for a, a community action campaign that we would move forward with. And we wanted to try to create action not only at the community level, but also within our organizations. And so about 15 agencies had participated in the session with Dr. Unger, and we had generally agreed that we wanted to do, new, do more in the area of belonging within our organizations as well as within the community. And so we moved forward with what our action plan was. So there's the seven areas that we focused on in our longer, seven resources for resilience or belonging. And here are the definitions, and I can certainly send this to you. I'm not gonna read through all of these definitions. And then we moved on to, he had also looked, tried to move those 
areas into practical questions tied to belonging. Things like, what are some questions that we could ask people that would really help to get at a deeper level about resiliency and belonging? So I can reach out to my health center and get help when I need it. In my health center, or in my circle of friends, or you could just put in a number of different um, topics in there, or areas in there, I get to participate in making decisions that affect my health, my well-being. So those are some of the questions that we're moving forward with in terms of asking ourselves, how can we use these questions to broaden our conversations with the people we serve and with the community? So there were a number of change agent ideas that came forward from our discussions with the agency and community partners. And again, in the interest of time, I'm gonna move forward to kind of the plan, which is a smile and hello campaign linked to social media and a you belong tag and so the community action plan really includes several components. Posters in the early fall, and Jenny Lee's working with community groups who will generate the first phase of posters related to smile and um, say hello. There will be a media, uh, social media element, a blog following that, and moving to more a different level of posters as the second stage, a video, and then moving more to micro-community um, conversations and activity in communities, so community picnics. It's all timed in terms of the stages of implementation, and the people that are working on each of these work groups are a cross-section of agencies and community members. And they really see their roles as being almost, I'll say, community, community change agents. I won't say age agitators, but taking the message out and really helping to engage more and more people in this in, include, in kind of a, an inclusive activity. And then I want to focus just for a few minutes on, that's what we were doing in a high level way with the community, but we're also doing work within our agencies. And this is a, it's somewhat of an early stage, but in our own organizations, we took those seven dimensions that I, I highlighted earlier and had conversations about when people walk in our door, if we think of the seven dimensions, how do we ensure that we're actually intentionally changing people's experience of belonging when they come to our health center, when they call us on the phone, when they meet with primary care, when they attend a group, when they leave our health center. And so all of our agency staff contribute to their thoughts about how we can make changes in those areas because we really want to walk the talk. We, we want our community action and our internal, community, our internal health center action to, to align. So this is the kind of worksheet we work through. And so um, here were some ideas that were generated, and I'm not going to read through all of these, but these came from our teams. A whole range of ideas, even just walking into our health center. What things could we do differently or enhance to improve people's experience of belonging as they walked in or at any of the various stages I just talked about. <coughs> and then in the final stage that we want to get to is being accountable and finding meaningful ways to measure people's experience of belonging. And we're I, I've sat in on some of the discussions about how do we measure this? How do we measure this as a community initiative? And we're at the early stages. How do we measure this within our CHC? And we want to be aligned with other CHCs. We're also asking questions about how to measure the people's experience of belonging as, their, as part of their CHC experience. But then also the agencies that we've had dialogue with were also really interested in measuring belonging themselves. So we were also interested in if five or six of us who are all working with similar people or the same people were doing comparable, um, taking comparable approaches to ensuring inclusion and belonging, would we see a change in the people's experience in a measurable way across a number of agencies? So I think, actually, I think I just skipped over, I'll just leave it there because I skipped over the last slide, but I'll just say that's really at this point where we're at. We're at the point of starting to really look at how do we move this forward in our agencies, how do we move forward our community action plan with our other agencies, and how do we start measuring in a meaningful way people's experience of belonging. So I think I'll stop there and just say thank you for sharing this journey with us. It's very organic, and I'm really pleased that Jenny Lee and Linda are here to um, contribute to the discussion. Jenny Lee. Can I just clarify one thing? That, Absolutely. Um, if I was sitting here and be like, so where did the smile and hello come from? Yeah. So actually the community conversations done by United Way, they took all of their 
their data, and then we took all of the the uh, qual qualitative, right, the qualitative data from the Michael, Dr. Michael Algar event, and Michelle and I actually got together, collaborated the data from Community Conversations and Dr. Algar, and I'm not kidding, when we sat there and after an hour looked at each other's papers, and they both said, smile, 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 know my name, and a few things plugged in, but mainly the two themes that have all of her hundreds of people in the United Way talked about Oxford Shiny, and then the, the loads of people that were at the Dr. Michael Unger event, Oxford County said those words, smile and say hello to me, and I will feel like I belong here. So that's where it came from, was with this like, oh, doesn't that feel cozy? But it really was um, that, so I just wanted to- No, that's great. Thanks very much, Naomi. No, that's super cool.